Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, as most people know it, is an irregular heart rate, uh, often rapid, characterized by discoordinated activity between the upper chambers of the heart and the lower chambers of the heart. We see it very often uh, in the cardiologist's office, and uh, a lot of patients may present differently. The most common symptom of atrial fibrillation is palpitations. Patients often describe sensations of chest fluttering, shortness of breath, fatigue, weakness. Uh, most patients don't feel it at all. It's not a life-threatening condition, but it is associated with a lot of different comorbidities. One such comorbidity is clot formation in the heart. So when this happens, there's a potential for the clot to dislodge and go to other parts of the body. And one part is the brain and we sometimes see stroke as the first manifestation of a patient with AFib. One way that patients present, unfortunately, sometimes is with their first stroke, and then uh, what we do is we evaluate what caused the stroke and discover that they indeed have episodes of AFib. Again, most often times, patients do have palpitations as they're presenting symptom, and they seek medical attention in, in our offices, um, and then we can diagnose it with multiple modalities. The most common uh, way to diagnose is with a physical exam, just taking out the stethoscope and listening to the heart. Uh, we do a 12-lead EKG that uh, can show us the atrial fibrillation. However, oftentimes patients describe AFib coming in and out. Sometimes they don't come in in AFib, but they feel palpitations at home. So we have other uh, modalities such as Holter monitoring or longer-term loop monitoring. Sometimes we implant devices that monitor for six months to a year. Uh, so we have a lot of different gadgets uh, out there that we can diagnose AFib. Some treatments um, include medications to lower risk and lower symptoms. Uh, one medication that we use oftentimes are heart rate medicines to lower the um, fast heart rate associated with atrial fibrillation. And uh, we also have medications uh, called antiarrhythmic therapy that can convert them back to normal sinus rhythm. If all else fails, we have procedures out there uh, also under our uh, treatment strategies. And these treatments include cardioversion, meaning uh, electricity, shocking them out of AFib. Uh, we also can have uh, patients undergo procedures such as ablation, which encompasses transferring them to our tertiary care center for these procedures, which we uh, put catheters into heart and burn the nidus of the atrial fibrillation. So those are, you know, available options out there for patients. If you or somebody feels that they may have symptoms of atrial fibrillation, whether it's palpitations or shortness of breath, fatigue, just feelings of uneasiness, for example, uh, my recommendation would be to seek medical attention. And this can be done at the doctor's office. Uh, it can be done at an urgent care uh, facility. It can be done in the emergency room, but I would, I would recommend that a patient like that would uh, seek medical attention because a routine 12 lead EKG can diagnose it right there and then, and then the uh, treatments can, can begin. The key thing is to, again, uh, reduce symptoms and reduce risk, and, that, and, and that's basically the name of the game for AFib.